Okay, so today I want to talk about how to reproduce the material design ripple effect that you get on buttons, but using just pure CSS to sort of simulate that effect. Now I've got some starter code here if you want a copy of that. The link to it is in the description, so then you can follow along with this if you want. We've got three buttons here, and I've just applied some basic styles. I have styles for the button, and then on the ripple, I've applied a blue, and then a slightly lighter version of the blue with uh, alpha transparency on the active state, which means when I click on them, it's just turning a little bit lighter, but it's an instant change from one state to the other. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that effect up a little bit. I don't want to jump instantly, so we're going to create a transition between the two states by making the background take, let's say, 0.6 seconds. And a second transition, this one's going to go or going to take place when you actually click on the button. So on the active state, when you click the button, it'll take zero seconds. So it's an instant change to the light color. But then when you let go of this, it's going to take 0.6 seconds to get back to the ripple state. So you can see here, there's a little bit of a fade back. All right, so that's a fairly nice effect. But we want to get that ripple going that's going to require us to use a radial gradient. Now, a radial gradient is applied using a uh, background image. So we're going to set our background position. We want that to be in the center. We want to make sure that this is taking place in the center of our button. Now, you can write center, center, one for horizontal, one for vertical. Or if you just write center, that's the shortcut for having both values being set to center. We're going to set our background image. There it is, and that's going to be our radial gradient. Now, this radial gradient, um, we want to use circle. So the first value that you can provide, the default is ellipse, but we want it to be circle. We want it to be a perfectly round gradient. And then we're going to give it two colors. So from start up to 1%, we're going to make it transparent. And I'll explain that in a minute. Second color is going to be also set to 1%, but basically it just means from this point on to the end of the gradient, it's going to be this second color. And temporarily, I'm going to be setting that to black just so we can really see what's going on with that. So 1% again. There we go. That's saved. So on the buttons, it has set this tiny little one pixel spot or however big this button is, 1% of that. So a tiny little spot in the middle is transparent, letting the blue come through. The rest of it is black from this center point out. Now when I click on it, it's changing. And if I zoom in here, you can actually see there is a slight change taking place. Let's go up to 300%. There is a slight change. There's a tiny little blue dot there, and it lightens as I click on it and then goes back. So that's the little tiny bit of the background color that's being revealed through there. I'm going to grow this gradient. I'm going to make the gradient a hundred times the size of it that it is normally. Background size by default is 100%. So if I take that 100%, which is what it is now, you can see you save, no change happens. If I take this and I change that to multiply by 100, so it becomes 10,000. Now, the 1% is now 100% the width of the button. So we've grown that middle tiny dot. And as I click, I'm changing between those two background colors. All right, now to get rid of this black, I'm going to push the, little, the black out a little bit further by going beyond 10,000. Anything beyond 10,000 is going to be fine. So I can do 11,000, I can do 12, 14, 15, something in that range just to make sure that that other color is completely pushed out. Now, I'm back to what I had originally, really, but I'm going to change the background size. When I click the background size, I want to put it back to the 100%. So when I click, it shrinks, and then you can see it's doing sort of a reveal of that other color. So if my black were changed to something other than the black, like it could be the exact same color as this blue, or it could be a slightly lighter version of it. So we'll go 50% and let's go 55% for this one. 
There we go. Now I've got the gradient that goes transparent for the first percent, and then a slightly lighter blue for the rest of it. But that slightly lighter blue is pushed off here. When I click in the middle, there we go. Now we're getting this ripple effect happening. So it is transitioning from this background color to this background color. And the 1% is going from 100% up to 12,000%. So the transparent circle is growing to reveal the different colors. So as it grows, it's actually doing the transition from one background color to the other background color, which gives this nice sort of ripple effect. And when we zoom back down to the regular size, there we go. Now we've got these ripple effects taking place. And because this is our default, if we wanted to do buttons of different colors, it's a very small change that we have to make. Like here, this one's just ripple. All three of them right now are the, doing the default, but I've got a red and I've got a light colored one. So we could do ripple.red and then we'll do a ripple.red active. There we go. All we have to put in here are the things that we're changing from the default, which is really only the colors. So if I take this and I put it in here, and I take my background color for the, from the default, and I add the background image, all the other properties are going to remain the same. We're going to keep the same background sizes, the transitions, all that stuff. The background position, we're just going to change. So let's go from 200 down to 2 degrees. So very close to 0, which is the red. If I save that, there we are. And there's a button working with the red color. You want to do a light one. These are both fairly strong colors. You want to do a light colored button with a ripple effect. We could do that as well. Here, I'll just copy this whole thing. We'll just change the name. We are and instead of red this is going to be light and this one's going to have light in here let's go to 50 percent or 50 degrees that's going to give us a bit of a yellow color and we'll jump up to something really high here we'll say 90 percent so 50 50 and 80 and 50 50 and we want something darker for this other color. So let's go down to 20% and see how that works out. Okay, so we can got, we've got quite a light colored background here, a light cream color. And if I click, the button goes darker and we get a bit of a ripple effect happening there. Well, let's change that up to 90 so it's the same. There we go, that's a better ripple effect. Now the text is a little hard to read here so we'll have to come in and change that. If we're using this light one, we can go black or we can go a slightly off black, a charcoal color, and there we are. So we have the ripple effect happening on three different buttons, and it's very easy, you can see, just to add those few properties to change the colors that are being used for these. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.